Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It's time once again for my favorite feature of the month, Bargain Bag. Yes, this is where I open two mystery grab bags of CDs, seven CDs apiece, uh, from my favorite uh, local store, Skips Records and CD World in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, looking for buried musical treasures, as it were. Uh, and uh, in between opening the two bags, I review a CD that I have found or that you may be likely to find in a bargain bin at a fine music retailer near you. Uh, and by the way, if you don't, didn't get that joke at the beginning of the video, just Google turn your head and cough and you'll find out pretty much all you need to know. It's kind of a, a joke that uh, slightly shows my age. I mean, I don't know if it's a still medically sound thing that doctors do, but anyway, as I said, Google it and you'll find out. Uh, anyway, before I get to actually opening the new bargain bags, I'm going to quickly go over what I found in the last bargain bags. Uh, and I'm going to try and do this uh, faster than I have previously, uh, just because the videos are get, get a little bit long. My bargain bag videos have get, been getting a little long. Plus, I'm finding out that I have less and less to say about these CDs, with uh, the few exceptions, you know, of, of the decent ones. First off, we have uh, Waltzing Violins, yeah, Bargain Basement Classical CD from a no-name label. Uh, about the only thing worse than these are the uh, top 40 or, you know, pop hits collections from the Bargain Basement labels, like the the ones, I'm not sure whether the ones are worse from the sound-alike uh, artists, you know, no-name sound-alike artists, or the ones that are by, uh, that are new recordings by the original artists or one or more members of the original group. Yeah. Those are just awful. Just avoid those at all costs. But anyway, yeah. Junk. Uh, and these next few, I just could not find anything to say about them and, you know, no reason to keep them. Paul Wesley, kind of a folk rock, or more, well, I guess, I guess more indie rock singer-songwriter type of stuff. Uh, Alina Powell and the Glitter Folk. Uh, eh, you know, as I said, can't really find anything to say about them. Uh, Tammy Fowler. Yeah, she's okay. You know, but honestly, no uh, compelling reason for me to keep that. Show Off, yeah, this was one of those uh, Green Day clone bands, uh, sound alike kind of groups that was signed, you know, in that massive wave of uh, Green Day fervor back in the late 90s. You know, if you've heard one of these acts, you've heard them all, honestly. Uh, nothing remarkable on that. Uh, Gladys Patches, this was kind of a uh, metal, kind of slightly rap metal or punk metal, I guess you'd say, kind of stuff. Uh, Corn, Limp Biscuit, that neighborhood. Uh, but yeah, again, nothing remarkable. Uh, Galt McDermott, uh, new Galt McDermott, new Pulse jazz band. Uh, they were okay. Uh, I, you know, as I said, couldn't find anything really remarkable about them. They're an okay jazz band. If if you like, uh, you know, run of the mill, smooth jazz or contemporary jazz, give them a try. Uh, Atahualpa. This was this was kind of interesting, but it's just not quite my cup of tea. It's uh, Spanish language uh, music, very uh, uh, ethnic. From oh, what were they from? Uh, look them up anyway. Uh, Atahualpa. Uh, they they were okay. It's just you know a little too ethnic music for my tastes. Uh, somebody else would enjoy this more than I would. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention at the beginning. Uh, if you like any of these cast off CDs of mine. Drop me a line. Uh, let me know in the comments or direct message me on Twitter. We can make arrangements. I'll send them to you. Uh, I won't even ask for any money for postage or for the CDs themselves. It's like, you know, you can have them if you want. I'll, I'll send them to you. No, no costs, no questions asked. And then we have what was probably the biggest disappointment of the lot. Uh, you know how when your expectations are really high for something, the more spectacularly they'll come crashing down if you end up being disappointed? And that was the case with voice boxing. Uh, you'll notice that this, this was on GRP Records, and I got really excited when I saw that because GRP was the longtime home to uh, my favorite contemporary jazz group, the Rippingtons. And they also put out a few albums from a quintet of jazz vocalists called the New York Voices. And I really liked, I, I think I had their albums on cassette a long time ago, but they since got lost in the shuffle, and I've always kind of been wanting to pick up their uh, uh, the CDs, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. 
So, you know, that's what I was expecting with this was, you know, jazz vocals like New York Voices. But it ended up being R&B. And uh, the most difficult type of R&B for me to get into, which was early 90s R&B, particularly the, uh, the New Jack Swing sound, which... Um, Look it up if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I think most of Paula Abdul's first two albums uh, were heavy in the New Jack Swing sound. Uh, Michael Jackson uh, tried the sound out on, I believe it was his Dangerous album. And I mean, I mean, he did okay. I mean, he was Michael Jackson, you know, he, he did pretty good with it. But yeah, it was just, it's always been the most difficult subgenre of jazz or, uh, excuse me, R&B for me to get into. And it's always a little bit more of a challenge when it's female vocalists. Uh, you know, that, and it's not a sexist thing. It's just I just happen to have a little more difficulty getting into female vocals than male vocals. So, yeah, unfortunately, this was a big disappointment for me, voice boxing. But if you like uh, early 90s R&B by female artists, give it a try. Or, as I said, I can send it to you. And then we get to one that I almost decided to keep, uh, but it just ended up not uh, lasting a second spin, really. Month of Sundays is the name of the band. Uh, Mosaic is the album. And, it, I mean, it was okay. It just, uh, you know, just not really my thing. It was kind of uh, the early 90s. I think it was early 90s. Uh, jangle rock, I guess, is kind of the vague term that it went under, the subgenre it was called. Uh, gin Blossoms... Um, Crowded House, maybe, sort of. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, unremarkable songwriting, really. Uh, it was okay, you know, as I said, but yeah, just not enough for me to keep. Then we have uh, Magni Wenzel. This was a Norwegian CD, and I'm thinking I might keep this one. It, it was made up of, uh, you know, standards by Gershwin, um, Alan and Marilyn Bergman, uh, Harold Arlen, Cole Porter, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think I'm just probably just going to hang on to this just for the novelty of it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if fewer than 100 people in the entire United States have a copy of this CD, uh, if even that many. So yeah, I'll probably keep it. I mean, you know, good stuff, you know, nice innocuous stuff that I, I can put on and listen to in the background, no problem. And she does have a good voice. So uh, yeah, that one I think I'll keep. And then we get into the other ones that uh, I've decided pretty, mu pretty much to keep. And there were actually three of them, uh, four if you count the Magni Wenzel. And the first one is The Borrowers. Um, it took me a couple of spins to get into this, but then I, you know, I realized how good the songwriting and the performances are. And uh, yeah, just re it's a, a surprisingly catchy bunch of songs. It's kind of the same genre as that month of Sundays, you know, jangle pop, so to speak, uh, gin blossoms ish type of stuff. But yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, Emmett Swimming, they're uh, a little bit, uh, they're kind of post grunge. They're, yeah, this was 1998, so yeah, post grunge. And uh, I mentioned in the last video, video that I had heard of these guys before, and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. I'm, I'm probably going to seek out more of their albums. Uh, I don't think I can seek out more of The Borrowers, because I think that was their one and only album. And then uh, The Golden Republic. These guys were um, rock, a little bit more of a uh, harder edge. To, they kind of reminded me a little bit of... Not the Black Keys. Uh, the White Stripes. <laughs> you know, black and white, you know. Anyway, uh, a little bit of the White Stripes kind of, you know, that, that kind of rough around the edges kind of rock. And that kind of surprised me because this was on the Astral Works label, and they were known more for their electronic type of stuff than rock. And, I mean, this does have a couple of very small, slight electronic flourishes, but it's much more in the rock vein, so it kind of surprised me. So, so yeah, uh, with every pair of bargain bags, I seem to be getting a couple, one or two more keepers in each one, so... Uh, but at the same time, I feel like maybe I'm getting a little burned out. Uh, not enough to quit doing this feature every month, but, uh, you know, just the more stuff I listen to, naturally, the less stuff is going to stand out in my mind, you know, after the fact. So, anyway, without further ado, let's rip into this, uh, well, actually cut into this first bargain bag and see what's in here. <clears throat> okay. First one is Peter Blakely. Interesting, never heard of him before on Giant Records. He strikes me as, well, strictly from a visual cues, he kind of looks like Michael Hutchins. Um, so, yeah, give that one a try. As I say time and time again, I'm not afraid to listen to anything. Uh, hmm. Mother May I. These guys sound familiar. Well, this was on the Columbia label. Yeah, not sure what they are, but I will give them a try, absolutely. 
and we have Old Pike, 10,000 Nights. Looks interesting. 1999, uh, Sony Music, another major label release. So, yeah. Looks like rock. It looks, this, this looks like pretty much a rock-centric bag so far. Nuclear Valdez, or Valdez. Uh, that, that sounds familiar, too. And it's another Epic. It's another Sony family label. This is the rock bag, and this is apparently the Sony label bag, too. Uh, <laughs> another one from Sony label. No Man, Love Blows and Love Cries, an Obsession. Oh, oh a Confession, excuse me. Okay. Got a lot of interesting stuff to listen to that I have never, ever heard before. Jelly Legs, Mundy. And another Sony label. This is, I, this is the first time I've had a grab bag where, is it all of them? All but one so far have been from the same label. But yeah, another... Produced by Youth. That is, uh, that name sounds familiar. So, yeah. I think I'm going to have fun listening to this particular bag. And, yep, another Columbia. Hey, they missed just one of these being on the Columbia label. Otherwise, it would have been a, a turkey, or what's that a bowling term? Anyway. Uh, Expanding Man, Head to the Ground. Produced by, by Mike Deneen. Uh, so, yeah. An interesting bag of uh, CDs there. Pretty much all major labels. I think Giant was also on a subsidiary of a, subsidiary of a major label. Yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah. So anyway, on to the CD I'll be reviewing for you today. This was one that I found at a local store, one of the other local stores, not Skip's, and I found it in the $1 section. He just, for some reason, I looked at the CD and it just looked promising to me. Anyway, it is Vance Gilbert and his, uh, his debut album for Philo or Rounder Records. Edgewise. Now, uh, he, he, this one struck me right off the bat. Uh, vocally, he sounds a lot like a blend of Aaron Neville and Christopher Cross. You know, just that, that nice, clear, resonant uh, tenor voice. I mean, pretty much occupies the upper half of the tenor uh, range. But, but instrumentally, he employs a little bit of everything from pop folk to country and a little R&B. So he's kind of all over the map, which makes for an interesting album. Now, he includes some humor in some of his songs. Uh, for instance, one of the highlights in, in that regard is a song called Country Western Rap. And it's interesting because it's a foreshadowing of sorts of the country hip-hop blend that's come to be known somewhat disparagingly as hick-hop. Uh, and that's, you know, what, 20 years before the, before the fact, before it really comes into the fray. And, of course, he does it in a much more tongue-in-cheek and rudimentary way, of course. Uh, but and it's also kind of interesting because uh, part of the lyrics are a commentar commentary, a bit of a jab at the record labels for trying to box him into a particular genre because of his image. Because, you know, he is black and he does some country and folk music, which in that way kind of uh, references uh, Darius Rucker, who, you know, he was in Hootie and the Blowfish at first. Now he's a well-known country artist. So... You know, this guy, in in some respects, this guy was ahead of his time, really. And, uh, of course, there are some the several serious moments as well. Uh, there's a song called Good Cup of Coffee. That is one of the highlights of the album. It has some racial commentary in it. Uh, he In the song, he's a truck driver uh, who, you know, encounters sort of passive racism in certain spots. Uh, and there's another song called Rocket to the Moon, which uh, tells the story of a husband's inattentiveness toward his wife and its consequences uh, in more ways than one, kind of unexpected. It's got a little bit of an unexpected twist to it, uh, which adds to its appeal. And uh, one thing that my sister would have loved about this album is it has a cover of an Eagles song, uh, Lion Eyes, and he does a really good vo uh, job on it. He, he makes the song so much his own that I actually didn't realize it was a cover until I listened to it the second or third time. And another one of the highlights is the closing track called King of Rome. It's a great solo a cappella song, you know, just his voice, and that's it. And it was it was originally written by Dave Sudbury, and it was about a legendary a legendary racing pigeon by the name of the King of Rome. Uh, go uh, look up King of Rome on Wikipedia. It was kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, so, but yeah, a lot of good stuff on there. And one of my favorite songs that I haven't mentioned yet is called "Slip Away," and that's a song about a lost love. 
that it, it just has a great chorus to it, just one of the few genuine hooks in the album. And that's another thing about this album is it, uh, it's not to say it's boring that it lacks hooks. Uh, far from it. It's just the sort of music that doesn't rely on hooks. It doesn't need hooks. It just it needs time to sink in two or three or maybe four listens to really reveal its appeal, in my opinion. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but anyway. So, uh, but yeah, and another thing is I like this album so much that I decided to go online, poke around on eBay, and I found a seller that was selling his next three studio albums in a single lot, all of them still sealed, for 15 bucks postage paid. So I got a, a good jump start on his subsequent albums, and I've been enjoying those too. So yeah, uh, check out Vance Gilbert. Uh, he's made several albums, what, eight or ten albums, I think, over the years? Maybe not that many. But uh, yeah, he's probably not hard to find online. So yeah, Vance Gilbert, give him a try. So uh, anyway. On to the second of two bargain bags. I love this feature, I'm telling you. I never know what buried treasure I might find in here. Opening the bag. Sight unseen until this very moment. Can you feel the excitement? Anyway, here we have Polara. C'est la vie is the name of the album. Interesting. Might as well give it a try. And we have The Tender Idols, Step On Over. Have I heard of The Tender Idols before? They sound familiar, I don't know. I don't know if it's just because I have American Idol on the brain. Unprepared. Jim Nodal, Trumpet, and Dave Stores on Drums. Jazz, I would assume? Oh, and it's a local uh, label. Louis Records, Corvallis, Oregon. So, yeah. Always interested in some jazz. And uh, in fact, and if this is not one that I like, perhaps Sam Bennett, who was the originator of this feature, by the way, he inspired me to do this. Uh, maybe he would like that. So, uh, Sam, I will let you know if I like this album or not. And oh, an album with no cover art. Uh, Skeleton Key is the name of the band, I think. Fantastic Spikes Through Balloon. I have no idea what the album is called, and I have obviously no idea what music is on here, so uh, yeah, that'll be interesting to uh, listen to. Just a couple of them left here. Uh, the Voice Squad. <laughs> the Vice Squad. Good joke. Voice Squad. Uh, Minnie's the Foolish Youth. Terra Music Company, Ireland. Hmm. I have an Irish import on my hands. The Bonnie Irish Maid. The Banks of the Van. The holy she bears a berry. Sometimes I wish I were Irish just so that I could begin a tale of my youth from when I was but a wee bairn. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, Andrew Jones and Spirit House. Plenty, plenty love. Interesting. I kind of like the cover art, though. Very, 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 very colorful and whimsical. And the last bag in this, the last CD in this bag, Wurtico. Stereonucleosis. Hmm. Very interesting. You never know what you're going to find in these bargain bags, I tell you. So yeah, uh, nearly half of them are from the Sony family of labels, and the other half are who knows what. So, well, and just like that, bargain bag is over for the month. It's over way too quickly, honest. Yeah, like I've said before, I could probably do this feature every week if I wanted to, if I was crazy enough. But then, like I said in the beginning, I'm starting to feel a little bit of burnout already from having to listen to so many CDs. So it's probably a good idea that I don't do this every week, because then I'd get seriously burned out on listening to so much music. So yeah, it's just probably a good idea that I just do this once a month. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback as well, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers' channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.